Hello, Kenny. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank God. How are you? Thank God. Well, how was your base house? It was a whirlwind. It was a whirlwind. I can't, <laughs> I can't believe it's started in that already. I feel like we were just here and I was up here for it. So it's, uh, it's my favorite outfit. I love it. And I enjoyed, I enjoyed it immensely. We were in Florida. I think my wife allows me to say that now. Um, and in fact, I don't like even saying where I go. I need people bothering me in the few moments I have off in my life. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it was, uh, it was really great. And, uh, you know, focus to what we talk about here, retracts and rewinds. How about you? Uh, same here. We were, uh, first days in Montreal and, uh, last days, I'm actually still in Florida right now. And, uh, we tell by the, the sun shining on your beard. Exactly. Uh, we had some amazing, amazing wines. Some of the wines, uh, that we spoke about, uh, on our, uh, last episode, I'll tell you something funny. So at the end of our second cedar, we were doing Echod Miodea and we got to 17 and we were stuck. And then one of my kids said, actually there's 17 bottles of open wine on the table. <laughs> That's amazing. You're doing something right then. <laughs> and so it's amazing. I love it. Um, I don't have any great stories like that. Just to say we've got, uh, we also drink some great wines. Um, now it's fine with you guys. Both you and I are having obviously very busy days and getting, I guess, um, regular life back together the first day after, um, at least I travel and it's like my first full day. And we just reached out to each other and like, let's try to get a podcast in. Um, and it's, I'm telling the story to everyone else is that, you know, you told me, you're like, I'm going to be talking about this one specific line. And I'm like, wait, why? Because you read a thing and realized I like, no. And that's amazingly, we have the same line to discuss, which I thought was so funny. Um, but do you want to introduce it or should I? I think we should dive right into it. I think we should dive right into it. To me, it was, I had no idea that you just wrote about it. So I'm really excited to hear more than I already know about it. I uh, happened to buy it before it pays off. I just saw it and I said, this is going to be interesting. And at the second right. seder, I opened it up and we had a lot of wine. There were 17 open bottles at the end of the second seder. We had a lot of wine. Mm -hmm. And I served it, I think, right after Shukhanov. So for the third glass, we opened it up. And then everybody was like, wow, this is right. a shocker. I never heard anything like this. I think that's a great thing. I was thinking about it. I drank it on the left side of Pesach. We had a lunch. And, and I was thinking, what a great wine that would be for a Seder wine. Because it covers a lot of bases. And uh, what we're talking about, of course, is the Dalton Etna. And Petnat is short for Petiant Naturel. It's a bubbling. Very good French. I read it 10 times last <laughs> night. <when I> was... <laughs> so there was some credit. And a little bit of college French, I guess. But I'm not from Montreal. You have that over me. Um, and uh, I love sport rewinding. This this is the, another um, term for it is the, it's the, the method. And of course, I'm not pronounce, pronouncing that the French word, Mekope. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah that's good. You're good. You're told ancestral. Yes. I'm probably butchering. You are butchering right. it, but it sounds amazing. The ancestral method. And why is it called the ancestral method? It's because it was the, since the 1500s known that it was made since the 1500s. And like Champagne also made by accent. What happened? What happens when you ferment anything? The fermentation is not done and the, and the wine is in the bottle and still continue fermenting. And of course, we see that nowadays as similar of a fault. I mean, if winemakers not expecting that to happen and it's still undergoing fermentation, that ends up often being a problem. In this case, it's only going undergoing one fermentation. It goes through a single fermentation, which is the bottle. So it's kind of like almost like half made wine. Yeah. It was found kind of by accident. The, uh, the rumor has it that some monk in the 1500s discovered this. And then really kind of, uh, yeah, I was on the, uh, back burner until, um, the late 20th century, um, French kind of, um, 
Maverick winemaker is he was a very Christian Shusan is the way I had to look. Um, he was known for being a natural winemaker and he kind of fell upon this again. And then as like the Apple Warrior from our world, he was just an experimenter and he uh started playing around. I like it ended any popularity. He was in the War Alley, um just kind of a perfect place for Edna. And uh it's grown to become shiny, I would say. And as I wrote in my the thing I wrote up last night, um I think and it's this isn't a criticism, but the kosher world as we all know lacks behind <laughs> and lacks behind on food trends, it lacks behind on wine trends. We catch up eventually, but we always run a little behind. I think we saw that with Rose. Rose gained a lot of popularity in the kosher wine world recently and then uh, I kind of maybe like stalled a little bit because they got flooded with too many roses. Right. Everyone was giving a rose. Um and I think it's uh, Petnat's turn. And uh, something I I mentioned briefly, but I, I I would love to speak to some Israeli winemakers about is I think this is, and of course the one we're talking about, El Tan, is an Israeli wine. I think it's a really great uh, opportunity for Israeli winemakers to to make these. Um, they're 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 fun and they're refreshing and they're lower in alcohol also, and all these things make sense. For the Israeli climate and for like Israeli population, which is young and energetic, and it's a hot climate, and it's you know we always talk about how white wine should really become kind of um, the one of Israel, and like that should really they should put the pedal to the metal for white wines. I think Petnat is perfect wine for for Israel because of all of these things I'm mentioning. Yeah, I I so agree with you. But my daughter said it's like a kombucha. Of wine, it, it, it is, and uh, that's a, that's very cool. You can make very uh, observant points. I see. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so, and it's it's kind of accurate also because one of the things about it is that you know to go back to the, the natural winemaking idea is that it's kind of the theme of that night. It's like whatever happens, happens. Right. Um, it's it's no it's less intervention I would say with winemaker they don't treat it either with sulfur um, and it, a, a really interesting point by the way as opposed to you know uh, the most famous of sparkling wine champagne champagne is typically made from uh, from non aromatic grapes you know like uh, Chardonnay um, and uh, and this one specifically is made from it's from me from an aromatic herb. I'm pulling it up. It's made from semillon, mm -hmm. uh, mostly semillon. And then uh, I wrote a touch. I think I found nine percent of Moscat and Alexandria. Also, very very. Are you talking about? Aromatic. Are you talking about the rosé? Because I saw there was a white as well. There were two at nuts. I bought the rosé, but I saw that there were two. I didn't even know there were yeah. two. I only thought this was uh, this was the twenty twenty. What is it? Twenty three, right? Yeah. Um, I didn't know there too. It's it's called Petit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 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 you know, I had the bottle right now. When I was did not yeah. know that. Um, it was of course rose colored. It was like had a pinkish hue, um, but it was really fun wine. Um, again, just like at our table, everyone everyone loved it. It was very aromatic, and the bubbles aren't, aren't as intense as you find as in like a um, traditional method. Uh, sparkling wine, it was already even a prosecco or something like that. It was it was a it's a softer, and I think it's uh it's really just an interesting drink. I mean, you may not even realize it's wine almost when you the first time. If someone pour, if I poured this for someone who didn't know what it was and they asked them to identify it, I wouldn't necessarily think they immediately would take this wine. Mm -hmm. Someone who's not as you know, you know, what I mean, there's something. Different about it, it's almost a little more beer-like in yes. a sense because it's it's hazy and cloudy, and it's it's got a different um, kind of kind of complexity complexity to it. And part of that reason also is because because it's undergoing the fermentation in the bottle. You probably noticed this by the time you get to the end. It's called the the um, sediment. It, that's the the dead yeast. Yeah, it was like, almost, almost like little crystals, right? And and, and so you got that haziness yeah. to it. And that different uh, 
that different complexity to it. I, just, I, I it. thought I it was it. just, first of all, very well priced and really like, just a shock. I, I told you earlier, it was the shock of my savior and, and everyone else. We all were like, what is this? I, I, that's, I'll tell you something. Yeah, and, and you know, and I think because of that, um, I think, and because especially because it is uh, rose colored, I think you can, you know, as you saw, you can use that for a Seder cup and it's lower alcohol and really refreshing. I think the third glass, the yeah. perfect glass for that. So I, I, I actually would have never, ever it. bought a pet knot uh, before. I mean, probably maybe once I read your article, I would have, but I would never have bought a pet knot for Pesach. But I was actually at Bachlomo. Uh, in Zichron Yaakov about four months ago. And I was sitting with the winemaker there. His name is Ari Errol. I don't know if you know him. And he pulls out a bottle and he said, I've been playing with some of the indigenous grapes from Israel. And this was the Dabuki grape. Have you heard of a Dabuki grape? Right. So it's one of these, these ancient grapes. I guess through DNA, they were able to recreate this grape. And he said, I just made my first pet knot. I'd love for you to try it. And so he pulled it out. And it was like this, almost like a shock. I, I, I had heard over the years of this idea of a pet knot. And then having that at Bachlomo with Ari, I said, oh, wow. And then when I saw Dalton made one, I said, this is going to be great for the Seder. And that was really my, my impetus for trying it. Right. Um, I, uh, at, I think it was at a Jewish league event. I was really spent a good deal of time at the, the Del Tong table and, uh, with, with, um, with Kai Eschel, the winemaker and, um, with, uh, and, and drinking all their wines. And I really, I, that just, and they poured me that and I immediately, I was like, and I've had, I've had them before and I've had the Dalton in the past. And I guess I just like, forget about it. It's kind of off the radar a little bit. Um, there are some other Israeli ones. I, I, I could think of Ches Vila's made. Fantastic. Uh, Yaakov Oria uh, made one? I have Oria. Uh, I think Yaakov mm -hmm. makes one. I'm pretty sure. Um, which I have not. I think I did have that. You know, my memory is not, that's why I write everything down. You don't have to write things down. I write everything down. And by the way, I figured that when I put out a new uh, written piece that you got some kind of, uh, your, your, your things started buzzing or that you would know. I, I am so sorry. You know what? I am going to start today. reading your pieces, being that I need to be well read on the new Kenny Friedman uh, wine reviews. I, I, I need to, and, and all of what he writes, I should start looking. I, yeah, you know, I, I think uh, I, Someone criticized me once of the fact that I normally write the reviews and then he was criticizing that I should really do scores and these kind of things. We should talk but about But you that and I don't like scores. scores. No, I don't. And and I and you you know from reading things I read, I read more yeah. history and the maybe even the science of it, I, the background of it. Um that I like to try to hear people inside in this because you know, I can put the and it, and this is a perfect example as to why I do that, because if I put this up and I just say it's, I use all the standard wine words to it, what about that is anything different than anything else you're reading? This is a really a different wine. It is. It's a different wine. So that's just, it was a little bit in the background. So you just were, I did not read your thing yet. And maybe you're just going to say, go read my thing. But I'd love to hear just because a lot of us are going to be listening to us. We're driving, we're on the road. We don't have time to just pull over and look at your Instagram. What? Well, I, I covered a lot of, of the main points of what I wrote, but it was so fresh in my mind. I wrote it in that last night, and it was very fresh in my mind. I covered the main points, and I just pulled it up. And um, the, the name was Christian Chossard. Accidentally ended up with one fermenting in the bottle, led him down to the rabbit hole. So I wrote um, just a little more of the, the science of it, or the winemaking of it, is that pet nut excludes the secondary fermentation of champagne. So the, there's no added uh, dosage. There's no the, the sugar and yeast that's added afterwards. Like, that doesn't happen. It was really a wild time. fermentation. And, yeah. And so like, that's why you were mentioning when you were talking about our Earl and he's using um, the hooky, he's using something like that. I think so much that's, he's probably 
just a natural yeast that's on it to hook you, which is, that's awesome, I think, because that's like you really dream being the essence of Israel. And because like the natural yeast on an indigenous food. It really felt like that. So cool. I really felt so connected to the lands in a way that I hadn't felt before after having that tabuki. And you were drinking and it, drinking it in, in the land. land. Looking over those old Rothschild vineyards. Oh, have you ever been to the, the Bashlomo uh, little tasting room there? It like looks right yeah, over these old Rothschild vineyards. I believe they're the, the oldest vineyards or one of the oldest vineyards in all of Israel. And uh, yeah, it does have this very connecting to the land in a unique way kind of feel. It's that's very cool. Um, another point I made that I didn't mention yet is that I did mention that it's sort of like not as sharp bubbly type of idea, but there's also a lower pressure in the bottle. And something you'll notice when you buy pet nut is that with what's different about the top of it, the, the, it's corked differently, right? You don't see the, the standard champagne giant cork in it and the wire cage holding it down. Why? I mean, instead, you'll see what's called like a, a crown cap, which is where you use whole beer. Um, and why can we get away with that? It's because the, the pressure is half the pressure that's, that you're climbing in That's amazing. Actually, we had a problem um, opening it because who has a beer opener for Azov? <laughs> well, I didn't, but that's a, I guess I'm okay. I mean, that percentage of people that do. It's not for beer, though. I had last year, I had uh, the kosher, um, what was it? Yes. Yeah. Cider or something like that. I know. Like, yeah. So that, uh, so I specifically had it for that. Anyway, you don't you don't ever want to be called. Well, thank far, God uh, I had this brand new um, Haiku bottle opener that I got as a recommendation from my great friend Kenny, and it had a beer opener on it because you don't need anything else. That's, that's what you say. Well, that has that, and yeah, that has the that has the, the back you don't need anything else, as you yeah. said. You know, you don't need anything else that fits cleanly in the in your pocket. Um. By the way, while it's on my mind, I was I was in the back uh, at Kiddish at some point, and I saw an old friend of mine, and uh, he was introducing me. He's a wine guy. He's another friend of his, and another guy's like, "Listen, I have a question for you." He's like, "He said, what profit do you make?" Because they were obviously arguing about it before I came in. Like, what profit do you make on, mm. on uh, cognac? I'm sure, you know the answer. It's not like I was like caught off guard a little bit, and I was like, "I'm sure." He's like. He said, when you walked in, you looked like a religious enough guy. And I heard you know wine, but I'm a single person <laughs> sitting in my head's ash. So, um, but then, of course, we thought about it. I'm like, it's, of course, it's shahakal. And maybe, I mean, you can give more insight as to why, I'm sure. But um, it's interesting that Brandy and Cognac, yeah. which get more play on Esaf or shahakal and not Hagav. And Hagav is such a unique broth, specific to wine and it's only really for that. And I was, it, it, I was even thinking about the fact that like something like olive oil, which is a very, um, it has a high standard, right? I don't know what category to call it. Does not, it's still shahat, right. right? It's not, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, glory queen has eyes. That's, or, yeah, that, well, that's interesting. That, I guess, mm. Um, but, but it has wine, to be wine it, to be like, how it, it, it was what you're saying. And, right. and it has to be exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't have any essence of the, the wine anywhere. It has that taste of the wine, at least. But another thing I was, I was just, I was really, I was so curious about it. I for you not to, I looked it up. And the distillation process is such an interesting thing. What's happening there, and as it applies to Allah, it's very interesting also, is it's constantly going through re to distill the alcohol from the rest of the product, right? And it's actually going through a cooking process, which which renders it different halophically than, than wine because it's getting more yes. from like the outset. I need to read more about it, but I just think it's very interesting. And anyway, but the answer is it's a hot hole for all of you. Let's see. Yes. Oh, yeah. Coming out here. Coming out here. Coming out did you have any? We don't get, did you have any we don't get any cognac in, in Montreal, so uh, it's just not an option. I did not have any this year. I actually uh, had, like, usually I will have a uh, cognac around or whatever, and it's very enjoyable. And this year, I think we spoke about it at Sanko, and I, at uh, one day, I tasted a bunch of uh, new used to park in. Area, I really good. So I think that's another area that I'll, 
hopefully be expanding soon as we uh, go deeper into well, the is, world. As control. we both see that it's just right now, it's really emerging in a way that it has in the past. Right. It's so cool. And I think this, uh, what we spoke about today, the hey, not is, uh, is a perfect example of that. And, and it's, it's, it's actually going backwards in some ways because he's, is less intervention yeah. and more simple winemaking, but you know, it's, it's just about the, the experimentation and, and all these things yeah. that, that could be, and a lot of that, uh, this is an Israeli one and I know there's a, you know, a, continuing with, with our theme of Israeli wine for Pesach, which we did very much and there are only other wines I could talk about and we just still kind of fell on this good reason because it's fun and delicious and Israeli and, uh. Um, Absolutely it really stood out to me, and I think um, also as the summer comes you know, in, and, and maybe maybe we'll do a, a one on, on just rosés and whites because you always already summer it's warmer. We think rosés, whites, and the pet knot is a perfect summer one. Absolutely, absolutely. I uh, just this morning I saw our friend Josh uh, Rinderman from SO Wine in, in South Africa. He's about to release uh, his twenty twenty four rosé. But yes, I remember he's in Southern Hemisphere, so um, and it looks. Well, I I really enjoy last year's Altira. I I, 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 I happen to like his his whites, uh, his Altira uh, from the past. So I'm yeah, excited to to try his rosé. I don't think I've ever. I don't think he's ever had a rosé. Okay, he had a rosé last year. Uh, he also lived in love, it, but this one, as I mentioned on my mind, this looks made to take from literally made it because. Last year's was dark and fruity, that style. And this year is uh, more the Pro Apollo style, like very light in this. He told me it's very much that style. So, you know, we really was partial from what he did last year. And uh, he's a budding you know, superstar. to learn another yes. like, great banana cast. So, yes, one day you and I have to just more. sit in Binyamin's garden and have a, uh, an, off, an, an, an uncanny off the cuff conversation with him and, and learn and, and, and just lean from, uh, from the Rebbe himself. I uh, will. And I, you know, I, I think I told you this, that one of you, you added in a little safer that you wrote and, that uh, I was, I like wanted to make sure I got a lot of them because he's such a unique thinker and he's really a different person in Absolutely. all the line makers that I want you to know. I mean, a lot of them are so talented and unique in their own right, but he's, he's, he's something he's special. And I do believe <laughs> that Kavana has a lot to do with wine and that Kavana on that wine is something unique. He like, it's a, it's a, you know, he writes on his bottle, you know, about the connection he has to the mitzvah of making a wine for Kiddush. And like we said, the Kavana from the outside of him doing it, I always consider how when we make Sitsis, so if you really have to have that machine myth of sitsis in your head, also, not, my mind wanders all the time. I'm not the ideal guy. To, yes. You, you have to get that with matzo, also, right? You really have to be real cut fun on that. I'm like, long guy. <laughs> but he's, he's the right guy for that because he's so focused on but, the myth of making I, I know that, that wines and, are, and the grapes are so subtle and they are attracted to everything around it. I mean, right? If you have cherries, uh, around it is you're going to have some kind of cherry in your wine. If you have tropical fruits around, I mean, they're so attracted to everything around it. So of course they're attracted to the Kavana. It's the, it's the, yes, terroir the terroir of, of Kavana. I love that. <laughs> yes. And, uh, it picks it up. There's no question. Um, yeah, but definitely Easy. I would highly recommend if you see that mm -hmm. Galton Pet Not, just pick it up and, and try it because that yes. was just something special and unique. Different as somebody, I've never had a non-kosher bottle of wine in my life. I've only had kosher wine, so I can only tell you what the kosher world has, and this is something unique. And these pet knots are are literally game changers. I agree, and I think that uh, the autonomy is just continually unheralded the, the guy's a, a great winemaker, Alex Laruni is at the helm there and he's, uh, he's a highly energetic and, uh, he's a great ambassador from the brand and, um, I can't recommend it. Try their wines across the board are, are good value, um, and well-made. Well, thank you. Thank you. Can you?
to my uh you, you i'm on the road with my entire family so it's about to get very loud in here so i think maybe we should uh sign off <laughs> while we can yeah it was, it was great to to catch up and uh review this go on and uh let's let's do this uh, again this is uh fantastic and i'm so happy that uh we were able to kind of slip this in and for all of you who are listening and you got to this point with us send us your questions kosher wine podcast at gmail.com send us your comments we will uh send us your ideas maybe you have an idea for somebody that, that you want to have us uh, uh interview that you want to know more about you want to learn more about uh, we can either talk about that person or have them on and uh we are looking for your feedback because we cherish it and love it in a way like we coddle your feedback like little babies So true. you should see, you should see it's Kenny's so face light up every single time he gets a comment from someone. So if you know Kenny, just send him a comment because you're going to make his day. It's so true. I can't argue with you. I can't argue with you. There's a, a little, uh, a little serotonin is released in the green every time I get a comment. Okay, podcast. great. Great speaking with you. Have a wonderful podcast. All right. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of your trip and we'll see you soon.